Okay guys, so what we got here, and this will be a lab, is we have a ball here at the top at some height h, and it rolls down. So it's going faster, 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 fastest. And then it rolls at some uh, constant velocity. Okay, there's no friction or anything in this problem. Actually, friction is what makes it roll. So up here, it's total energy's potential. But here it has kinetic energy trans, plus it has rotational. So that's kinetic energy rotational. So potential energy has to equal kinetic energy trans plus kinetic energy rotational. So this is mgh, which is the potential energy. The kinetic energy is one half mv squared. And the kinetic energy is one half i omega squared. So this will work for any round rolling object depending on its moment of inertia i. So let this be a sphere. So I for a sphere is 2 fifths mr squared. We have not derived this one yet, but we'll do a separate video on that. So you have 1 half mv squared plus 1 half 2 fifths. We're substituting for I right there. <clears throat> 2 fifths mr squared equals omega squared. Okay, now, omega and v are not the same thing because this one's rotational and this one's translational. But let's remember something that um, linear thing equals, rota equals rotational thing times radius. So velocity, which is linear, has the equal rotational thing, which is radians per second times radius. So if I solve this for omega, omega equals v over r, and since this thing is omega squared, square everybody. So omega squared is equal to v squared over r squared. Let's make that substitution right there. So maybe I'll let these twos cancel each other right now. So that gives me m r squared over 5, and for omega squared I have v squared over r squared. Look what happens to R. R squared on top, R squared on the bottom, gone. Boom. Coming down is MV squared over 2. I'll just write that as over 2 equals MGH. Okay. Um, notice that we have an M and an M and an M. So I could divide through by M and M is gone. 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 So the mass of the rotating object doesn't matter. It just sort of matters on... Um, definitely the height and a factor so I'll show you the factor after we're done with this so here we have well let's just write it out uh, v squared over 2 plus v squared over 5 to get a common denominator we're going to multiply this by 5 over 5 which is a big fat 1 okay we're going to multiply this guy by 2 over 2 which is also multiplying by 1 Okay, so this gives me 5 v squared over 10 plus 2 v squared over 10 equals gh. Add this up. So <clears throat> 5 tenths plus 2 tenths is 7 tenths. 7 v squared over 10 is equal to g times h. And let's solve this thing for v. So we'll multiply both sides by 10 and divide both sides by 7. So we have 10 g h over 7 equals v squared, and we'll square root both sides. And so that's the expected velocity in meters per second using the MKS system, how fast we expect that thing to roll. So what we're going to do for a lab is we'll measure this height, and we'll set up like a 1 meter interval here and time this with a stopwatch. And we know that you know velocity equals distance times time, so um, <clears throat> well, we know that we have uh, <laughs> distance equals velocity times time. Messed up the easiest equation in physics, so velocity equals distance over time. So this will be a one meter standard, and we'll have some time average here, because we'll do a bunch of trials, add them up and divide, say five trials, add them up, divide by five, something like that. 
So I'll make a video of that lab with a data table and you guys can analyze it and answer the questions. Okay, that is all.